that dichotomy was first articulated, remember, 2,500 years ago when Pericles gave a great speech that we are an open society, we Athenians, and we're fighting a closed society, the Spartans. And what we lose by our generosity and our naivete, we gain because uh, we look at the world empirically and we're not afraid to you know, voice different views and we are inclusive except for the whole liberal project. Of course, they lost the war. <laughs> so it's a dichotomy that, that, that uh, we're always faced with. And the answer, of course, in particular to your question is there's always a fine line. Sometimes we err on one side and one side the other, but it seems to me the last 30 years, the modernist project has erred on the side of uh, overly being self-critical and uh, not defining our values and not having standards and traditions. And uh, so when we go one side or the other, we are in peril. And I think modernism of the brand of the last 30 years has gone so far that we're almost suicidal. Um, we need some help in the audience of ordering the questions because we can't see everyone. Um, whoever, let's, whoever was next, please stand and, yeah. Well, we do bring it to, uh, to the universities, but we also um, bring it to the public square. So there are, there are faculty out there who have already contacted me that they want they wanted to bring it into their classrooms. I'm much more interested in the film being used in a classroom than to have a campus screening. Um, but I think it's really, um, Parents have to have some accountability for the values that they've taught to their children. And if the parents aren't doing it, maybe the grandparents need to step in. Maybe they all have to do it together. Um, you know, it's not, we can't blame everything on the university. There's a lot of problems in the university, but there's also a lot of problems that are happening in the family units when uh, all of a sudden um, consumerism and other issues become more important than values. I, I think one of the answers is the worst thing you can do today is write a check to your alma mater with no condition. <laughs> that money is going to be antithetical largely to what you intended to be. So it's very important that donors be proactive and they specify how the money can be used. And if they can't be assured that the money's going to be used that way, then give it to something like Hillsdale College or St. Thomas Aquinas.
when you look back, when you look back at the origins of some ideas, these ideas. Uh, I remember the days that William F. Buckley began with National Review. These were fringe movements. Uh, all political movements begin small, whether it's Said Patul, whether it's Lenin, and you take these germs of these movements, you take these ideas, and you voice them, and you find other people who have similar views, and you build up to the point where you actually can influence these things. But there is no, there is no alternative. This is house-to-house -house fighting. I mean, everybody has to engage themselves in their own way, with their own organizations, their own faith groups, uh, and on and on. So th this is a doable thing. We should take heart. Uh, Gloria, you've done us proud with this film, and it should inspire you to do a lot
Um, and, uh, and I very much want to do that, and if anybody is interested in funding that, uh, please see me. No, I'm, 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 I'm not saying, I don't mean to be cute, I'm, I'm serious. Um, because it, to, to cover, you know, to, to, to cover the, the, the work of doing that, and to printing it, and distributing it, I did that with um, my second film, Unmasked Judeophobia. We actually made an activist guide that uh, is printed and also available on that film's website and is used. So I'd like to do it with this, but I need some funding. Thank you. Uh, who is next? Um, yeah. Have you considered showing this to Congress? <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, my, my films have been shown on Capitol Hill and also in other Canadian Parliament and Australian Parliament. So it's it's it, it is something that I hope that this film will 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 be able to do as well. Yeah. <coughs> um, who who is over here? Okay, and, and, and I saw your hand, but yeah. I totally agree with this young man who said that would be great in highlighting advantages of our society over this oppressive ideology that the military Islam represents. However, I think a portion that, that is missing, and hopefully that will be then the second phase, a corollary to this will be actually showing how to defeat this ideology in a systematic way, rather than leaving it up to the general population to do their own thing, develop a constitutional philosophy that can be used as a cohesive weapon against militant Islam. Okay. So I, I hear you. I, I, my, my style of documentary filmmaking is to present the issues, to catalyze people, but it's not to tell people what to do. And that's what your jobs are. Your jobs are to, you know, to figure out because if, if the film tells you what to do, then the film will be discounted, not as a documentary, but as an advocacy piece or a propaganda piece. There's a lot of uh, programs. The Bradley Foundation is a $1.2 billion conservative foundation that has something called the Bradley Fellows, young people that are at satellite campuses. The Hoover Institution has a training program, the Prager University, the Claremont Foundation. So what you're suggesting is not only in action right now, but it's existed for 30 years. Maybe this film can be shown to those groups, but there's a lot of organizations, foundations, universities that try to have seminars and bring young people in as to train them or to at least expose them to a different point of view and then to have them go out as emissaries. And it's been pretty successful because um, I mean, there is an alternate view and an alternate megaphone in the media, documentaries, uh, universities that there was, didn't exist 20 years ago. So there's some progress. Yeah. Yes, you said in an offhand way that you would rather have the film shown in classrooms than at campus events. Could you explain why? Sure. Because what happens when you have a campus screening is that um, the organizations that support it watch it, and the organizations that really need to, and the students who really need to see it are outside protesting. So if you have it in a classroom, you have the ability for any faculty person who would be bringing the film in would have the integrity to then process the information with their students. Oh, well, I have my own proposition. I say you need to see this movie. Oh, well, you got to go see these other things as well. How many here have actually read any of the Quran themselves? Pick up that book and read it yourself. And then the next time anybody ever says anything to you, you can say, do you know that page seven it says da 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 And we have to know this stuff ourselves and, and, and so I think, you know, each of us has to have a little bit of expertise so that you don't get dismissed as being 
any of this moral relativism that starts to happen. And, you know, of three sons, two went off to join the Israeli Air Force, and I'm... I'm Ms. Alto. Thank you. And I'm an ex Catholic. I have no idea what my sons got me into, but I sure do now. <laughs> I, I speak Arabic. I know the Quran inside and out. I know the Hadiths. And I, anybody ever who says anything anymore, have you read the Quran yourself? Well, no, but you should. Yeah. And it says this. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yes, and 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 um, the ch the church the, the evangelical churches are very enthusiastic about the film, and we I already have a, you know some some very large screening <laughs> schedule. Synagogues are a different matter. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm talking about non-orthodox synagogues are a different matter, and. Um, and it'll be interesting. It's going to be an interesting experience. Uh, I mean, I can, um, you know, and synagogues and federations will be very interesting. Thank you. And and you know, we're not going into this blind. No, uh, but but you know, we're in. This is a war, and um, we're not the ones who are the snowflakes. <laughs>